How's it going everybody, Dotodoy here with a very exciting video today as we're going to be taking a look at some tier lists for Dragon Ball Fighters after the most recent Season 2 patch. Now of course as it is a tier list video there are a few disclaimers that I always feel the need to give out. Tier lists are meant to be fun ways to get the community involved and start talking about characters they think are strong, strategies they think are strong, and talk about what individuals really value in a fighting game like this. So as always if you see something you agree with or disagree with in this video feel free to put your thoughts and opinions down below in the comments and maybe even go the extra mile and make a tier list yourself I would love to see those. The other thing that I really wanted to get across in this video was that because of the season 2 patch being the one big balance patch we're getting this year, I wouldn't expect this tier list to be shaken up so easily. It's going to take some more DLC characters and some more discoveries or just consistent tournament performance to really get some stuff to move here. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump into some season two tier lists, starting with some professional tier lists so we can actually get some opinions from what the highest level believe. Uh, we have two examples today. We have Cyclops' DBFZ tier list, as well as Hook Gang God's tier list that he recently made on stream. The full vod of that stream, as well as all of their Twitters will be linked below down in the description and probably even the pinned comment as well. Right away, if you look at the top of their list, you can probably already pick out a few characters that are making appearances in both of them. Those characters being Piccolo, Adult Gohan, Bardock, Kid Buu, Gotenks, Super Saiyan Goku, and Yamcha. These are all characters that I'm sure a majority of people can agree are very strong. Bardock, of course, is still as much of a force to be reckoned with as he always has been. This man just plays the game of Dragon Ball Fighters too well. The ability to be dangerous at almost any point on screen is one that you would obviously kill to have, and Bardock just does it so effortlessly. Full screen, he can throw himself in with no regard. If he's in the air and wants you on the ground, he can perform a level 3. Two level 1s to secure kills, all while staying on the field. Amazing buttons, as well as one of the best, if not the best LLs in the game. The hitbox on this thing is, is insane and just covers so much space. Bardock really just does not have a flaw. This character is just insane by Dragon Ball Fighter standards. Piccolo is another contender for characters that are just stupidly good. This man, if he gets you in the corner and has some bar, can do some absolutely disgusting snapback loops, as well as the air dragon rush into Hellzone grenade being fully real now. This character just has a thousand ways to mix you up and make you pay for even daring to block some of his stuff. Piccolo was crazy last patch and they sort of missed their chance to tone him down and in fact even toned him up a little bit uh, so he escapes into this patch still top tier and of course the three other characters that make up hook gang god's top five are adult gohan kid boo and Gotenks. All characters that are very dangerous to block against, and in the case of Kid Buu and Gotenks, even when they're off screen, their assists are definitely still good enough to make them useful in the back. Gohan more than either of them once he lands a hit can really make you pay, while also building up an insane amount of bar. After the differences in the top top tier though, both of the tier lists kind of agree on what the middle to bottom of this game looks like right now. And I would also say for sure that this area of the tier list is probably going to be the most prone to change. Because all of these characters are so close together, I could definitely see some more tournament results moving characters up, other characters down, and even one little piece of tech discovery could probably shoot a character from the bottom of it to more the mid or top of it. That doesn't mean we're not going to talk about the characters in this section of course, but we probably won't get to each and every one of them because in most circumstances what they do well and what they do poorly are pretty common between some characters. One of the bigger discrepancies between both lists though has to be the placement of Cell. In Hook Game God's stream he felt like they were severely downplaying Cell because of Fenrich uh, who is very well known for his cell uh, and on their list they obviously have him uh, pretty low lower than a lot of other characters my personal take on this is cell is very much still a devastating character and i would probably agree more with hook's placement of him than theirs but i wouldn't be surprised if they've just played against some of the best cell so many times that what cell can do really doesn't phase them anymore who knows maybe even if i think cell is that good once you get to a certain level maybe he suffers from the same problems goku black does of not being able to open you up well enough I don't think that's necessarily true, especially with some of Cell's block strings and mix-ups, but that might be their reason for the lower placement. Other characters that I want to talk about being placed here is Super Saiyan Vegeta, Captain Ginyu, Cooler, and Broly. Super Saiyan Vegeta has been falling out of favor in a lot of people's eyes, but I still vouch that he is an overall super solid character with a great assist backing him up, one that allows him to slot into almost any team that wants to run him. Still allows him to be a very good comeback character that can make use of bar without necessarily needing it, if that makes any sense. Moving over to Captain Ginyu, this is just a character that can run you over with sheer force and nothing but it. Uh, if he's calling out his Ginyu Force members uh, timely, as well as making sure that he leads you into situations situations where there is no right answer on how to guard, you just kind of have to do a little guesswork, then he can very quickly feel like a top tier character. 
With that said, he is obviously missing the normals of a top tier character, one that would put him along the lines of Super Saiyan Goku, Adult Gohan, Bardock, the likes of those characters, but I still do think there is reason enough to pick Captain Ginyu over those characters if you can get comfortable enough with those Ginyu Force combos. Cooler is a character that I think is slept on in the eyes of most people because a lot of people just don't play him. Thanks to the new patch, he got some new damaging routes, as well as better Oki off of his uh, dive kick, which he can now go into more easily. Add all that to the fact that Cooler was a sleeper character back in season one when he was released, and now you have a character that can be very deadly in the hands of somebody that actually goes through the trouble of playing him. The same goes for Broly, he got a few more changes as well as better ways to get sliding knockdown in the corner and better Oki off his level three. So pretty much still the same character with all that armory goodness, just a little more consistent now. Now to round off the talk about the middle slot of the tier list, we're going to go into Zamasu, who's placed up an S on Hook and God's tier list, but is just under that area on the Cyclops tier list. Few Zamasu is a character that got a lot better in the patch. Not only did his auto combo become a throw, which you can make people fear and have to react to it, and now has very feasible routes to make you have two hits to death, uh, starting from the very beginning of the game. So messing up once or twice against Zamasu will cost you a character, and most likely the match in a game so founded around momentum. Now we can move on to the usual, more controversial aspect of tier list, the lowest of tiers. As you can see here, there's a lot of familiar faces from old patches as, as well as some new ones. To start it off, we have characters like Beerus, Goku Black, Android 17. All of these characters are no stranger to being down here. Nappa as well is a character that often finds himself struggling uh, and is still pretty much there right now, at least on Hook's tier list. Tien has also found himself way down here, even though he is pretty useful in the damage compartment. Tien is really just a one note character. Once you block one TN, you've pretty much blocked them all. Uh, and he really struggles opening you up a lot like a lot of other characters here on this list. Now we can, uh, we can talk about, we can go ahead and talk about the uh, big elephant in the room. Krillin on both tier lists uh, is listed as the worst character in the game. Uh, that's not necessarily true for the Cyclops tier list. They could always add one of those other characters below him, but I think it is time to admit that Krillin is a little underbaked right now. With the latest patch, they gave him some new stuff with his Key Blast, which I have said in the past that I'm a big fan of. Uh, being able to get meters sliding knockdown is always super cool. But unfortunately, man, I don't know, dude, why did they take away so much stuff along with that? It, it pretty much reset Krillin. So while I don't think Krillin will be this low forever, I think he might make himself work up to where at least, you know, TN and the rest of the gang are. But for now, it's like starting over from square one with a character that never even made it to square three. <laughs> so it's it, there's so much work ahead of the Krillin, Krillin players. But of course, still my favorite Dragon Ball character, so I will keep rocking out with him. Uh, he does have a really fast beam. And that's another thing, even when you're low tier in Dragon Ball Fighters, usually you still have things that you do well. Tien got damage, Krillin's got fast beam as well as some projectile game. Uh, base Vegeta, for example, while he did lose, he was never played a lot and only lost stuff in the patch. He still has, you know, really fast key blast. Uh, and, you know, I always thought he had pretty okay buttons. But that's pretty much both of these tier lists. Base Goku, also low tier, by the way, doesn't have a real level three, which really hurts him when he's left all alone. Uh, and assist, assist isn't great enough uh, to warn him staying back for too long. But since we're coming to the end of this video and we've taken a look at the pro tier list, now I just wanna give you my thoughts on the game as a whole. Of course, this is coming from my experience. You can see I made two different lists, one laid out like Hook and Gods and another with a more well-rounded approach for more in-depth stuff, a little harder to talk about. But let's just go ahead and break down uh, some big stuff that I really wanna talk about here. So my top six for the game that I would put in S are Bardock, Piccolo, Adult Gohan, Kid Buu, Super Saiyan Goku, and Gotenks in that order. So Gotenks just barely doesn't make top five and instead Goku replaces him. You might've noticed I didn't talk too much about Super Saiyan Goku in it at first, and that's because I wanted to save him for right now because I think Super Saiyan Goku is, is super slept on. This is a character that is great in terms of consistency. One thing I saw on Twitter that really stuck with me ever since was Goku comebacks aren't impressive anymore. If you have a full health Goku and they have three characters and sparking and you also have sparking, that sounds like an even matchup, bro. Goku is just so consistent, has amazing beam assist. Uh, beam assists are always amazing, but his normals, his key blast, 
He just feels like a complete team in one character, and obviously that's what Arxis was going for, but since they also gave him better routes if he has two bars to get additional damage, it almost replaced his missing two double Kamehameha super. So yeah, this is a character that I think might even be better than Kid Buu. I don't know if I want to say that, but consistency is king in my opinion, and that character is so consistent. You can see over on my left tier list, the only character that I think that has a better assist and more well-rounded than Goku is Yamcha, and that's just because his assist is so good. It, let's not even talk about it, dude. His assist is amazing. I run him on almost every team. After my top six, you'll see characters like Zamasu and Android 16, Yamcha, Vegito Blue, Cell. Now I do want to mention that all these characters aren't really in any particular order except for Zamasu and 16. I think those characters are definitely the next best. After that, you could probably argue for everything else. A uh, Goku Blue after Cell, I think is pretty a pretty safe bet. Goku Blue is pretty good nowadays. And then down below, even though I really wanted to do it, I just couldn't bring myself to move Jiren up a tier. I just feel like he's missing a little something, but I don't know, dude. I feel like you could move him up if you wanted to. He, he's definitely in between these two bottom tiers and then we have everybody else <laughs> 17 and vegeta 17 still has a lot of issues not to mention they took away his ability to barrier in response to a 2h so some 17 players even argue that he's a little worse now i don't necessarily feel that way myself i definitely like the improvements to his normals a little more but it does suck to see after that it's base goku and krillin pretty much on the same tier there if you're not comparing uh, usability on a team if you are i definitely think krillin takes it over him you can see i moved him over to the half fault uh, the speed on his rock increase just didn't make it a good assist at all other than that though that's both of my list uh you can pause and, and try to get into the nitty gritty of it all i made the second tier list after the first and after thinking about it some more i might have moved characters around uh so make sure to bring up any you know questions you have down below in the comments any any improvements you would make your thoughts and opinions on characters as well as your thoughts and opinions on my tier list again thank you so much for doing that while you're down below in the comments if you like the video in the channel make sure to hit the like button and subscribe other than that there's a few videos on your screen that you should feel free to check out if any of them catch your eye thank you so much for watching this video once again i'm dr doya and i will see you in the next one